I got 500 bucks to do this video, and this is really all I could come up with. Well, it might be the whiskey talking, might be the wine, but I think that I found someone I can settle down with. Musician Dan Davidson was part of the original lineup of the band Tupelo Honey starting in 2003. He is now a solo country artist. His song, Found, was the number one charting indie song in July of 2016. It was the number one selling Canadian country song for several weeks in that same year. Found achieved gold record status in 2017. Because I kind of tripped into it at an early age, like when I was 17, I graduated when I was 17 and all I really knew how to do was be in bands and play guitar, so that's kind of what I did. Like right after school, the only thing I could think of to do was to apply to music school. that was really all I cared about, you know? I was just playing in punk bands and, and having a good time, and I, I wasn't really ready to, to take on some sort of a business world or anything like that, so I just kind of followed what I liked just until, you know, maybe something else struck me, but the further I went along with music, the more I just became hooked. I always equate it to golf, you know? You take, you take one good swing, you're a golfer, but and in music, you know, you have one good shot, and uh, you get that taste for it, and it's just, it's addicting, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. I think Dan's always been in interested in music, but I think I really noticed uh, uh, him taking um, a passion for it in the, in, when he was in his early teens. And I remember I bought him a guitar when he was about 13 or 14, and, and even though I'd played the guitar all of my life, he was a better guitar player in right three away. weeks than I was yeah. going to be in my whole <laughs> life. And, and so we knew then that he had a... Um, a, a special, I think it was a special kind of gift for, for music. Okay, Dad, give us a song. Well, I, I like to say that we, we discourage our children from chasing their dreams, but we insisted that they pursue their passions. <laughs> and, and it was clear that he was passionate about music, and we knew from a very early time that this was uh, uh, something that he was going to be actively involved in for uh, a very long time. And uh, Yeah, we were supportive of him with that decision, and he yeah. loved it. We started in 2003. Uh, we'd all met playing together in a different band actually and we decided we liked each other's company enough and we were all kind of wanting to start the same kind of a rock band and then we found a singer and in 2003 we started Tupelo Honey and our first gig was stage 13 in Camrose in front of probably about 5,000 people. Well Ty and Greg, they, it's, it's so crazy, you know, you spend so much time with somebody. We've we're, we're brothers, really, you know, I've seen these guys, we've grown up together. I, I started playing with them when I was 19 years old, so it's, um, and I, I'd known them before just through being in, you know, the local St. Albert scene, guys playing in bands. So, you know, I, I know them so well, I know their families so well, they know my family so well, and they're a huge part of my life, you know, music or no, they're, they're, they're there for me for everything, so it's, it was a total no-brainer to have any of those Tupelo guys involved in, in my country career. It's like, yeah, I, yeah, it's, it's almost like having a twin, you know, if you go out, they just know what they're going to say, but musically. So the way Greg plays and Ty plays, I know how they're going to set things up. I feel like we can sort of, without saying it out loud, we can communicate. And, and there's a real chemistry on stage that I think you can't, you can't just fake. It's just, it's there. Before we knew it, you know, we were touring with Billy Talent and, and David Deadman and then eventually Bon Jovi and Shinedown and a bunch of really big American acts. So things were just like a, a dizzying pace and, and uh, you know, I was, I was young enough to, to be able to really throw everything at it and I learned so much. And eventually, you know, we, we had um, songs in the top 40, we had a uh, top five song on Much Music, we had placements in Sunkissed ads in the States and it was just a wild, wild ride. We've always given lots of advice, <laughs> very little of which has ever been taken. He, he would li let us listen to his new songs and say, what do you think? And uh, 
when he first um, became the lead singer for Tupelo One, he said, I want you to listen to this song. I, I got this new guy singing. So we listened to it and I said, isn't that you, Dan? <laughs> he said, yeah, that's me. <laughs> so it was really good. I've worked with Dan for a long time. We were partners in college, actually, for music. And uh, it's, all, it's always fun with him. He's always, he always keeps it on a level that is at, like fun for everybody and level-headed and tries to keep you know, people calm. Because sometimes the road can get stressful. Well, I think it comes back to that passion thing. If you're mm -hmm. passionate about what it is that you do, uh, you know, you're not only going to be per personally fulfilled, but I think you'll be professionally rewarded. And, yeah. and so far, that's proven to be the case for Dan. We're all very supportive of it. And his sisters, his wife, and we all support it a lot. Are you ready to it? Here we go. Oh, it's been crazy. I mean, I, I still work full time, so um, we're really lucky that we both have flexible schedules. Um, my position allows for me to stay home as well so that Dan can pursue his dreams of, you know, making music his career. And so with this last tour and stuff, um, yeah, I got to stay, stay home with my girls for a lot of it, and then we relied on the grandma squad. I don't know how people do it without grandparents, but they're the, they're the most amazing people. They help us through everything, so without them, we couldn't have done it. She's seen me go through the busy times and, and the phase of being 20 and, and just sleeping on the floor of the van and doing whatever we can do to get to the next gig, but she's also seen me at the phase where you know, I'm, I'm getting treated very well by promoters and things are really working well, like right now. And it's so, you know, we're, we're very lucky because it's so hard to do this with kids. And I have no idea how people can do it when they live provinces away from their families. And, and you know, so we, we have a very close family network. My, my uh, mom and dad and Jen's parents, or everyone, are, are so great. They help out the grandma squads on it all the time. And uh, Jen's job is very flexible too. She she runs a, a very successful family business. So, you know, when I have to go on tour with Brett Kissel for X amount of weeks at a time, we figure it out. The song is because of you. Sat down, past the time. All alone, I gave up trying because of you. And all that time, you know. That fire, that hunger for performing with Tupelo never really went away. I, uh, so I, I just kept writing and I started realizing that basically um, everything that I've been doing in rock, there was something in there that was inherently country and you know, inherently Albertan that I've been watering down. So I just kind of let it fly and started doing stuff that felt like good times music, fun music, and uh, the country career was born. He came home one day and said, I think I'm gonna try country. I'm like, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, I mean, Dan, he grew up listening to country music, and he's always loved all different genres of music. He's worked in all different genres of music, and he loves writing every kind of music. So, I mean, it wasn't a huge surprise, and I think it actually suits him. I, I kind of like that he's got the edgy rock feel still, but he, yeah, I, I don't know. I think he suits the, the, the country scene really well. Under the midnight sky, we count our lucky stars. You know, I think Dan's fundamentally a, a songwriter, I and mean, that's what he likes to do is write songs. And he and he's always uh, had an affection for all kinds of different music. And, and uh, grew up with music, always in the car or when they went to bed at night, they always had music. So it it's part not of our surprising life. that that journey would take him in a, a bunch of different directions. And uh, uh, so, I, you know, I think I think uh, country music is a songwriter genre. So I think that he's yeah. uh, been particularly comfortable in that space. Mm -hmm. 
I think right now we're in a time where country music is l the least country music it's ever been. Um, and I think, um, I mean, depends who you talk to, it's a good or a bad thing. Uh, I think um, every music goes through its ebbs and flows. Um, I'm not really concerned about that, but what I think sets Dan's music apart from the, everything that's coming out of Nashville and, and, and stuff right now is that it's, it has those flavors of old time country with the fiddles and, and the feels of the songs, but it also has the, uh, you know, the hipness of the new country kind of mashed together and that really kind of made it kind of needle its way through all of the, you know, the other mm -hmm. things that are out there. I'd known Clayton for probably 10 years off and on because we, Tupelo had played, we'd play the odd festival where they'd have some country crossover and the Roadhammers are a pretty rocking country band so we'd seen them and I'd met Clay a few times and, and as I was getting really rolling in the country, you know, it's, it's not like we're in Nashville here, it's, we're not surrounded by the, the top songers in the world so I was just thinking like who are the best guys in Edmonton that have had the most success in this genre and, and Clay is at the top of the list, he's world class, he, he's, you know, he's survived and lived in the Nashville scene and, and thrived in it and you know I was like I'm just gonna call this guy and uh, say hi and, and sort of reintroduce myself and I was like so I called him one day I was like hey man it's Dan from Tupelo Honey and I haven't seen you in a long time I'm kind of doing this country thing now let's let's hang out and just see what happens so yeah I went out to his house he was living just outside Edmonton at the time in, a, in an acreage and we just made a big pot of snobby French press coffee and uh, got down to some writing, and it was it was just crazy, you know. It was instant chemistry with uh, with Clayton. Like I write with a lot of people, but but Clayton's been a big part of my story. You know, he was he, him and I wrote Found and Bar Murder together, so two top twenties like right out of the gate, and one of them was a gold single. It's inspiring. When I joined up with this with Dan, I said we had a conversation. I said, look this is a new thing, a new avenue for you. Like you don't feel pressured, like you have to use any of the guys from your old band. But if you want us to come and play, like we'll, we'll be there for you. And he was nice enough to at least take me up on that offer and use me as his drummer at this point. And I don't take anything for granted. I'm having a blast and I, I want to continue to make music with my friends. If Dan decided he wanted to, to change again to do the death metal polka band, um, <laughs> I would probably be on board for that too. People say you gotta be in Nashville to write a hit song, and I don't think that's true. I think there's an unbelievable amount of underrated talent in Canada, and I've, you know, I've seen it firsthand. It's just, um, there is a stigma to going to Nashville, and of course, there is amazing people there because it's the center of the universe in country music, and that's just where everyone goes. So it's, it's concentrated there, but it doesn't mean you can't find great people elsewhere in Canada. I had a great, I've been to Nashville about five times, and I love it there, it's, it's fantastic. I don't think I'd ever live there just because I like, I like living in Canada and I like living in Alberta and I like uh, the way my kids are going to go to school and, and things like that and healthcare, of course. <laughs> but um, it's a great place. It's so inspiring. This last time I went, I, I wrote with some huge heavy hitters, like guys that have worked with Blake Shelton and Keith Urban and Taylor Swift and stuff. Um, and I got to play at the Bluebird Cafe, which was really kind of a historic thing. <laughs> a pretty bridesmaid on a pub crawl. Lucky for me, he ended up at a bar sitting next to me. Oh, like it was destiny. Seeing one of my country heroes, Willie Nelson, on the wall always is a little bit of a moment for me, a little country music moment. My arms the way you looked at me. Oh, I could barely breathe. Dan's brought us some great music, some great songs, and uh, if, if we think that we can put his song beside a Conway Twitty song, or play his song right after a Marty Robbins song. That's very important to us. Kissing Country 103.9, there's Dan Davidson. It's found. Yes, Dan Davidson's going to be playing in his hometown of St. Albert. The well, we, we knew about his, of course, success with Tupelo Honey, so I was aware of that. But quite honestly, normally record companies bring the music to us, and they say, hey, this is our artist of the day, our artist of the week, and we want you to play them, and sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Saint but Albert in Dan Davidson's case, I actually had channel. his fans bring the music to me, and some of his fans were friends and family, and they were like, man, this found song they had found, pun intended, and they were like, this is like the best song, it should be on the radio. So literally, it, 
listening, I'm like, you're absolutely right. I think his fans actually were like a record company for him that actually encouraged radio stations like ours to play the song. Uh, we put it on the radio. Uh, everybody else fell in love with it. And of course, the rest is history. It became uh, the highest charting uh, independent uh, song of that year, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, it, it's just become a really great story. Country music, it's it's they're diehard you know it's it's that's what i love about it in rock it was always 20 to 30 and they come and go with what gets cool right with with country they're like 16 to 600 <laughs> and uh and they're just they're loyal so you know it's really nice to see and i think i came out with a song that was was very shareable it was uh well found was really the first song that people kind of know me for and it, it became a huge wedding song i think it's kind of just it's a fun drunken proposal song so people love that at weddings and I think that was a big reason that everyone wanted to share it. And, um, and sh kind of show that they loved it. And, you know, that, it went so far for me. As, you know, I think the biggest uh, telling sign of that is going gold, but peaking at number 16 on radio. Like that, for me, that was like, okay, I don't care about radio chart numbers as long as people love the music. I think songwriting is is one of the hardest things you can do musically, and, and some days it's easy. Like with Found, me and Clay had Found done in two hours probably, but we call it a, call it a sky song. It's falls from the sky right on your lap. But other songs, like I wrote one this last week in Nashville with two guys that I write with a lot that are great, and it, we just grinded it for two full days, and it was um, it was hard work. And so you never know how it's gonna go, and everybody does things differently. Like sometimes for me something will hit me and like maybe I'll be in a crowd somewhere and somebody will say something that sticks out. So I'm like, oh, I gotta write that down. So I'll write it in my phone. Or I'll have a melody and I'll sing it into my voice notes on my iPhone and usually I'll look at them later and like, what was I thinking? So it'll be like this. But uh, yeah, so it, you know, I never really know. Some days it's easy and some days it's hard, but for the most part, it's kind of about the process because I feel like you have to get out some of the crappy ideas to get right. to the gold nuggets sometimes. It started out, uh, Dan had this kind of a shell of an idea. He had some lines and he had that hook of, I've been found and, and uh, you know, we, we just started carving it apart but, but telling a story about a, an individual who's been lost in the wilderness and, and that idea of meeting that certain someone and feeling that feeling of being found. I think that both of us could, could relate to that feeling. And, uh, and, and that day, you know, like I said, all of the, the stars aligned when, when those emotions and that stuff was just kind of getting poured out onto the page. And, and uh, you know, so I think it is, all good songs to me are a certain amount of it is torn from the flesh. Like it's, it's comes from something real, from a real feeling. And, and that's what makes them great. The listeners, I think, gravitated to it right away. Uh, it's, it's got a really upbeat feel. A lot of the singles that we've added, very upbeat. Uh, they have real country elements to them, which uh, our listeners, obviously, we play a lot of older country music, so they really like the, the old stuff. So when we introduce new music to them, they still want some of those real country elements, and uh, Dan gives that to us. A gold record for any artist is a unique thing. It was a really astounding thing. And, and uh, when he called me and told me that we were getting a gold record at CCMAs last year, I was dumbfounded, you know, uh, because, and I also think that there's a, there's a certain an intangible magic when you set out to write songs without an agenda. I mean, of course we wanted to write good songs and he was looking for songs for his record, but we weren't sitting there going, no, this, you can't say that on radio or this will never work, on, you know, and trying to do that. We, we didn't get in the way of the song. We just wrote some songs that we thought were great and we enjoyed singing. And when that kind of thing happens, I've seen it time and again, that is when the lightning strikes. I, I like getting awards. I think it's really fun. It's, for me, it's like, there's something a little bit weird about it because I never feel like music should feel like football. You can't win music, you know, it's all very subjective. So it's nice 
I, fi I find that the way to go about it is to just keep working and keeping your head down and doing something cool and uh, you know, being great and not going away, as my dad says. And, and when you look up and somebody's handing you an award, that's just a bonus. This is kind of one other thing to put on your resume. The most rewarding part, and especially when the audience is responding the way that they've been responding to Dan's music, um, when you see people out there singing along and getting excited, and that's the definite payoff for all of us. We have been at gigs in strange places in the middle of the night watching. Midnight at one white hour. Watching them yeah. play. So, you know, we've, we've really enjoyed the ride. We think it's just mm -hmm. lots of fun to watch. And, you know, you take great pride in it. You also take, it's, it's really uh, interesting to watch the journey. And uh, uh, as I say, because he's so passionate about it, it we don't have to, uh, to uh, worry that he's making a mistake because we know that he's doing what it is that he uh, genuinely uh, feels that he was was made to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, now that um, I've toured the country a few times on a couple of really successful songs, I, I'm seeing a huge growth in, in the fan base and, and a lot of people that are really invested in what, what we're doing. And it's, it's awesome, you know? I've, I've, I keep telling my guys this, like Greg and Tyler that are with me, it's just, it feels like the good old days all over again. Like, I feel like I'm 20 again and people are out there screaming the words at us. And this is what we live for. What's up guys, it's Dan here. We're in Beijing, China. Uh, we're doing our first international show ever. We're doing a Canada Day event here in Beijing. Uh, we just had, I think we've probably got about six hours in the last, six hours of sleep probably in the last four days or so. It's been a little nutty. We're traveling all over the world this summer. We're shooting some tons of vlog content, some stuff for this new video we're working on for a song called These Are My People. And we're gonna have some fun, so. It's been a while, I haven't really done one of these like little self updates in a bit, but uh, lots to talk about these days. We're in Europe, we're in France right now, we just got back from Beijing a couple weeks ago, we're in France, and then we're in Milan, and then we're in Hungary. Uh, I just got to announce that I'm heading out on tour with Brett again right away. And uh, I'm up for CCMA Rising Star, so we got lots to celebrate. Baby, I've been thinking about it lately. I've been thinking about roots down at the end of an older road. And if you want it, I got a ring in my pocket. Yeah, it's got your name on it, girl. Let's set this thing in stone. Let's settle all down I got it all mapped out Give me your left hand, honey, I'm your man. Oh, I can see it now. Oh, I put my money down on some white picket fence on an old two-lane, two-bedroom house and a diamond ring me on the ground. Girl. 